Hello Booktube, my name is Kate and this is my channel, Chapter Kate. So, I have not been as active in video making the past couple of weeks, maybe? I don't know. I don't know when the last time I was active. Um, but, I, I know I've, I've had a de definite decrease in my productivity video-wise because it's the end of the year. I have a lot going on, everybody's got a lot going on, it's just a lot. Everything's a lot. I wasn't actually intending to do a video like this, however, I've seen quite a few booktubers do, you know, their 2019 goal videos, and those have quickly become one of my favorite videos to watch this week, so I'm going to be doing that. Now, because goals can be so many different things, I want to make my goals um, split up into three different parts, so it's going to be my bookish goals, or reading goals, um, my channel goals, and then my personal goals. So if you only want to watch one part of that, I probably won't put timestamps anywhere, but you can probably like fast forward around and figure it out if you really, really want to skip me. It only hurts a little bit. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Section one is my reading goals, so we'll go with that first. Now, usually when you think reading goals, a lot of people think of their Goodreads reading goal, um, and I don't put a lot of value on my Goodreads reading goal, and there's a lot of reasons for that. The first year I set a Goodreads reading goal, I set it at 100, and I started at the very beginning of the year, New Year's Eve. Like, I started reading on New Year's Eve, so I counted it. Um, but I started reading on New Year's Eve, and I got to 50 books by the end of June. And I'd slowed down the month of June, and then I stopped reading altogether at the end of June. So I was on track to get to 100, and then I didn't do it. And then this year, something similar happened. I didn't actually start reading this year until May, like really reading, and I set my goal for, I think, 50, and I think I made it to 60-something at this point. And I haven't really been reading since the beginning of November, so I only really read from May to the beginning of November. Again, it wasn't very consistent throughout the year. Um, when I set a reading goal, I don't set it with the expectation that I'm either going to meet it or not meet it, but I set it as a way of encouraging myself to keep going. Obviously this year didn't work so well. I did keep, you know, I did complete my goal so maybe next year I need to set it higher that way. Um, I will keep on keep being on. Keep on. Whatever. I think I'm going to set my goal again at 100 so that way um, I can keep going the entire year and if I, you know, I reach 100 pretty quickly then I'll probably go up to 150. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. I'm unpredictable. I don't understand myself. I don't know how anyone deals with me. On top of an actual number of books I want to read, I have some other goals in my book here. In January, my intention is to read all books that I've been given for Christmas. So any book that was sent to me um, by booktube friends um, or any books that were given to me by um, my family members, my husband, obviously he's a family member, or any other friends. Um, but really the only people in my life that give me books are booktube people and my husband. So any books that I was given for Christmas I want to read in January. After Christmas I realized that this goal was unrealistic for me and I'm going to be now reading one book from each person who gave me a book for Christmas. And this picture is extremely unflattering so we're going to go ahead and turn that off now. If it's a series or a trilogy I'm going to attempt to read the first book in that thing. Trilogy, series, duology, whatever. Um, but that's going to be what I'm going to try and do in January. Yeah. My second goal is to read a couple of high fantasy series. I did a video like a while back and it was like books that my husband wants me to read and I did tell him that in 2019 I'm going to try and read at least like one per month that he wants me to read. You know just because I would like to kind of get into what he would he likes reading and um he also is going to start reading a couple more of the books I like. So we're going to try and do that. You know, we're readers, whatever. And most of what he reads that I don't usually go towards is the High, San High Sanity series. Most of what he reads that I don't immediately reach for um, are those high fantasy series that are like really long. I love high fantasy, but typically I don't go through those really, really long series because they're such a commitment. Like Wheel of Time and um, the Malzan series. He's also read like every Star Wars book in the now Legends Extended Universe. I've read a couple of things in there, like one trilogy and part of a series. But um, he's like read all of them because he has that sort of patience and diligence to read just a hundred and something books. 
<laughs> so in a universe I'm going to attempt to do more of that kind of become more dedicated to the worlds that I'm reading about because if I you know own a book there's no point from in me owning it if I'm not going to reread it that's not true I love having them next one is finishing books that I started this year so in 2018 because there's a lot of books that I started this year and did not finish the next one is to read more genres but typically I go for fantasy and sci-fi I have been reading a little bit more contemporary this past year because of my green ribbon book club we read books that have mental illness representation and a lot of the ones that have really accurate representation or that actually call it by the diagnosis name are contemporary so we I have been reading a lot of contemporary books which is not my favorite genre at all but I am trying to read more mental illness representation so um, I'm actually going to be looking for it a lot in some fantasy um, and science fiction because I would love to see it done well and not done in an insulting way so maybe we'll find something. I don't know. But some of the genres that I would really like to get more into are horror. Um, I do have a couple of horror books that I really want to read. Like Horror Store I have now, which I'm so excited. Thank you, Samantha. I really want to read The Haunting of Hill House. I watched the series. I loved it. I really want to read the book. Plus, I was watching um, Stripped Cover Lit's video. And they just they just talked about Shirley Jackson, the writer. And how she wrote the short story, The Lottery. And I didn't realize that it was the same author. And I loved that short story, even though it disturbed me deeply when I first read it. And there's a couple of other, um, there's a couple of Stephen King books that I want to get to and uh, other horror books that I would like to get to. Another genre would be historical fiction. I have a handful of historical fiction books. I used to actually really love historical fiction when I was in like middle school. Um, I would read these books. I can't remember what they were. I feel like they were somehow related to like American Girl Company or something, but they were written like journals by these girls in different points of history and I really really loved those at the time. I don't know if it was the formatting or what it was but I really liked them. But I just have some really cool like historical fiction I want to get into. And then the last sort of genre, it's not really a genre, but type of book that I want to read is more obscure books. Like really weird books. Just weird funky books. Books that don't take things quite as seriously. Um, and if you didn't see my 12 books of Christmas video, one of those books is definitely and I cannot wait to read that book. Another bookish goal, which is semi-personal and semi-bookish, is to kind of stick to a spending plan. If you haven't seen my video about um, spending plans and books, then you should totally check it out. Um, there's been a big conversation on consumerism on booktube lately. My video on consumerism wasn't labeled as such, even though it totally is about my reasons for spending so much on books, um, but also how you can sort of change your spending habits if you want to. So, I really want to stick to my spending plan that I kind of discussed in there that I would try out. And that is um, sort of setting how many books I can buy by how many books I've read. That way that I'm actually consuming books. I'm not just buying things if I'm not reading them. But I really want to try using my local library more. Um, libraries are amazing resources. I like to own my books. Um, however, I think a lot of the reason I don't use the library is because when I walk in the library, I get a lot of anxiety. It's very quiet and I feel big and clunky and like I'm going to run into something or make a lot of noise or something or people are staring at me and my social anxiety just kicks into high gear when I'm in the library and I don't know why I just I just do you don't think it be like it is but it do I'm gonna try and desensitize myself to that because the library has a lot of awesome like classes and group things that happen as well I'm not just there for the books but like just it's a cool place to go my next section is my channel goals for 2019. So any things related to my booktube channel. My number one goal is to improve the quality of my videos. Um, I would like to get some equipment to make my lighting a little bit better um, and make me not so anxious about the way my skin looks. Since filming this video, I actually received a ring light and an editing program, as well as a nice microphone from my husband for Christmas. I also want to be more detailed in my planning of my videos. I want to have more of an outline when I go in, and I have done that for quite a few of my videos, but I would like to do that a little bit more because I have a tendency to, if I don't have a plan, I kind of zone out when I'm talking and I'll have to talk around myself until I find my way back to the subject and then I either have to crop that you know, segment a video up or I have to cut it out all together, I have to redo it or I just end up leaving it in looking stupid. Also, I think since I do a lot of discussion videos, that's the best way to get my points across is to have sort of a plan going in or at least a more detailed plan going in. My next thing is to be more diligent about captioning my videos. I've done this for quite a few of my videos, but not 
anywhere near all of my videos. I have a really hard time sitting there and captioning attention. It's just, just not there for it. And I talk very fast and I mumble a lot. And I type very fast too, but I always have such a hard time just focusing to caption things. So I am trying to get more um, diligent about captioning because since I have been learning ASL and since I, you know, have been appreciating that language, there's no reason for me to make my videos not accessible to the people that use the language the most. It feels like I'm, a, I'm appropriating their culture by learning their language if I'm not going to make my videos accessible to them. I also want to incorporate more of my other interests into my channel. So more music, more maybe art because I haven't done a lot of that recently. More writing because I haven't done as much of that recently. So I want to incorporate some of these other interests that I have into my channel um, because I feel like that will make my content more diverse on my channel. I'm also hoping to incorporate more vlogs on my channel. I'm really, really bad about vlogs. I did a small one for the Read Up Greenville um, thing that I went to. Um, I'm hoping to go to BookCon this coming year and at that I would definitely like to get more vlogging done there. Um, I think it's going to be easier for me to do that at events, but I also want to vlog different things that I've tried. I want to do reading vlogs. I want to vlog during um, readathons or read-alongs that I do because I really, I've started so many vlogs and tried to do them during those weeks and then I just don't keep up with it. So I feel like I really want to be more um, cognizant of that when it's going on. I also want to network more on like Instagram. I'm really bad at Instagram. <laughs> I really am. I don't have any consistency in my style. I don't remember to take pictures and when I do I'll take like three and post them all and it's just I don't I don't plan. I don't set them out. I don't really have a good surface to do it. I want to work more on trying to network myself on Instagram and, and do more creative things on there because I feel like it would be a good way for me to connect more even more with the community. I would really like to kind of put this more out there. Um, because it is a really important hobby to me. It's something that takes up a lot of my time and a lot of my life and I would like to people to know that I'm doing it. <laughs> my next thought is that I really want to schedule my videos more, um, have a more regular upload schedule, and I don't know how that's going to work out for me. I would like to become more regulated with my uploads, but I don't know if I'm going to have like an upload schedule specifically. Because of the way my moods are up and down so often, I can't, I'm not really reliable to myself reading wise, video wise, blah, 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 blah. I mean, even like this month, I've tried to read so many different books in the past two months. I've tried to film so many videos in the past two months. Yesterday, I was trying to film the booktube recognition tag and I had a lot of drive all of a sudden and then immediately it fell apart once I like finally got all my stuff fixed to where I could do it. So, um, I'm not reliable enough at the moment to make a plan. And then the last goal is the one that some people, you know, are totally on board for. Some people think that you shouldn't set these kind of goals. However, um, I would very much like to have 2,000 subscribers by the end of 2019. Um, I know right now I don't even have 1,000 subscribers, but I'm hoping to have 2,000 by the end of 2019. My reasoning for this. Yes, I want to gain subscribers. Everybody wants to gain subscribers, whether they say they do or don't. I feel like after you kind of reach a certain point, like 1,000 um, on YouTube, your your videos are more likely to pop up in other people's feeds. You're more likely to connect with more people. And that's what I really want out of this experience. I want to connect with as many people as possible. I want to have opportunities from this. I want to be able to you know, do a lot of cool things. And I feel like the more you have, the more... Um, sort of resources you have in that sense. You might disagree with this, you might not, and that's totally, you know, that's fine. Just from my view, I feel like I would have even more sort of opportunity with a lot of things if I had more subscribers. So um, I would like to work towards that because I like to make videos. I love making videos and I would love more people to see what I am creating and putting all my time and effort into. Not that the people that are here are not important. I'm very very much value those people and I very much value the friendships the connections that I have made so far but I always want I always want to make more connections I always want to make you know um more impact to meet more people and I feel like that that is the way to sort of do that the next section is my more personal goals so these are things that are really not so much book related but more my personal things I want to achieve. The first one, of course, is to continue learning American Sign Language. Um, I started learning it when I was very little, like just simple, basic things. And then I took two semesters in college and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. There's a really big deaf community around where the city where my college was. And then where I currently work in a psychiatric facility, I've had a couple of deaf patients and I've only been able to talk very, very minimally with them. 
and being a deaf patient in a psychiatric hospital where no one can speak to you has got to be the worst thing ever. And I would like to make that environment more accessible to those individuals. The next one is I really want to do more songwriting. I don't write songs a lot. For a music therapy person and somebody who's in a band, like, I don't write enough songs. That's just, that's it. In the band that I am in, the guitar player writes most of the songs. I've written a couple of them, um, and I'll make up the melody to whatever he writes, or I'll complete things, I'll add things, and I, that's great, but I would very much love to start writing a little bit more. Um, I have a lot of words in my brain. I just have such a hard time putting them to music. The next one is more exercising and healthy eating. Um, I feel like I have not been taking very good care of myself, and I would like to take better care of myself. That's that simple as that. I want to feel better. I want to be more financially responsible. Um, a big part of my financial impulsivity is to do with my mania when I experience that. Um, and that's a huge symptom of bipolar disorder is manic spending, obsessive spending. I haven't gotten myself into like deep trouble or anything yet when it comes to that. Um, but I feel like if I don't do that as much, I will have more money for opportunities that I want, you know, like going on trips, um, going on vacations, buying gifts for people that I love, um, buying clothes. Um, I don't buy clothes for myself very often, and I, so I end up wearing the same things over and over again, and then I don't feel so good because, you know, I'm not wearing things that I'm comfortable in. So my next goal is I want to be more present. Um, I have a really hard time staying present in the moment, staying focused. Um, I really want to work on my mindfulness and um, practicing being in the moment more. and a lot of the reason that I have a hard time with this is because of my mental illness. As much as I want to, you know, um, improve on it, it, a lot of it is my mental illness. But I feel like the way that I can really improve on this is I want to get back into therapy. Um, I've been out of therapy for a year now. Um, I'm going to get back on meds. I've been off meds for like two years, maybe a year and a half. I think it was, I think it's been over two years, honestly. I have so many amazing people in my life that support me. I feel like I'm not doing things to the best of my ability because of not being on medications. And a big part of me not wanting to be on medications is because it makes you feel like a zombie. So hopefully I can avoid that zombie feeling and get the right mix of things where I don't feel like I'm losing myself. But that's all of my goals for 2019. We'll see if I get there. Hopefully I get there. Um, maybe we'll do a check-in next year or a reaction video to this. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see. But if I don't reach these goals, I just keep trying. And that's all life is. It's just constantly trying to grow and trying to improve and trying to um, get closer to completing the work in progress that is our lives. Anyway, that's all I have for y'all. Leave some of your 2019 goals below and I will comment back to you. I'm usually pretty good about getting back to comments. Usually. But if you'd like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye! Dripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night I feel the soldiers coming, I'm done pulling up a fight I feel my eyelids closing under